Hey friends, it's Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel Terry and I am the author of three young adult fantasy novels and the third and newest novel is going to be the topic of this video. So the time has come for me to tell you guys all about my third fantasy novel, The Phoenix and the Crown. My proof copy just arrived in the mail yesterday and I absolutely love it. The colors are super vibrant. I was initially afraid that they'd be a little bit dark, but my wonderful cover designer, Rena, anticipated that and she lightened the files for both the paperback and the hardcover because when you print something it tends to be darker than it looks on the screen but she anticipated that it's great it looks amazing the cover is super bright i love the colors i love how thick this book is this is my longest book that i have ever written i wrote this book created this story for the very first time when i was in eighth grade i'm just so excited to be able to finally share it with the world and I just can't stop flipping through it and I just love it to pieces. So let me tell you a little bit about what this book is about. A pirate with a deadly secret, a princess desperate to save her dying kingdom. The kingdom of Deira is dying. For the past 10 years, rain has poured from the skies and the sun refuses to shine. Crops wither and rot in their fields while the people starve. Annie is the princess of Deira, desperate to find a solution. Using her knowledge of plants, she experiments in the hope of finding a hybrid that can survive Deira's harsh weather, but time is running out. Ben is a pirate, captain of the ship Phoenix, who helps the people of Deira the only way he knows how, by stealing supplies from other ships and delivering them to the starving villagers, all while concealing a deadly secret. With no other choice, Annie finds herself forced to abandon her work and accept a marriage proposal from Alara, the kingdom to the south, in exchange for much-needed aid. Plagued by witch hunts and pirates alike, Alara is not the paradise it appears. Even so, Annie believes their southern neighbor is the only hope Deira has. Until she meets Ben. So that is the blurb, but that is the main premise of this book. Unlike Lightbringer, this is a very easy book for me to talk about to describe what it's about. The simplest, easiest way to put it is a pirate and a princess have to join forces to save a dying kingdom. Very easy to sum up. This book has many things that I like. I like pirate stories a lot, but I've always struggled to find one that I enjoyed reading. And they always say you should write the books that you want to read, and this definitely falls under that category. I don't like to reduce books down to their tropes because I think that it's a little bit cliche and it can be off-putting to some people. And I think now book publishing and marketing in general has just gone so heavy into the tropes that it basically makes every book feel like a trope list. But to help give a better idea about what you can expect, I'm going to go over some things that could be considered tropes, but tropes themselves are not bad. It's how they're executed. And I do want people to kind of get a feel for what they're getting into in this book, just in case maybe it's not for them. So this book has things like enemies to lovers, forced proximity, reluctant alliances, pirates, witches, royal intrigue, conspiracies, that sort of thing. I just really love it. I love the conflict in this book and how different it is from the Guardians duology. And that's what I love about my stories, how different they are from each other. So I'm really excited to be able to take you guys on a different adventure with different characters in a different world. And this is the first book. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit just to try to explain and then of course when the second book comes out later this year I'll explain it further. But this is a true standalone. It's a YA fantasy, young adult, and it's a true standalone. You can read this book and it ends in the end. It is, there's no cliffhanger. It's a complete journey and story on its own. The reason why I list this as the first book in the Atlas C series is because it does have a companion book which will be coming out later this year that goes along with it and I wanted the two books to be obviously related so then if people start looking them up online they will be linked by that series name Atlas C. That is the name of the ocean in this world and the reason why this is a complete standalone is because book two is a prequel sequel. <laughs> what that means is that book two is a companion novel to book one. It's a prequel in that the events of book two take place before the events of Phoenix and basically you do not in any way have to read book two in order to enjoy this one. In fact, I definitely recommend that this one be read first. I wrote both of these books that they could be read in any order, and there's nothing wrong with that. The reason why I encourage people to read book one first, even though the events of book two happen before Phoenix, is because if you read book two first, all of the plot twists and suspense in Phoenix really won't be there anymore because you've already read book two and you know everything that's been going on and 
you know where this is going. But you can read them in any order. I just encourage people to read Phoenix first for that reason, but you in no way have to read book two. It's basically if you love book one when you read it and you're curious to learn how we got here and more about all of that stuff and you want to know the story before the story and you want more, then there's book two. But this is a complete standalone on its own. You don't have to read book two. You don't have to worry about committing to another series because this is a complete story in and of itself. So Phoenix releases April 30th. I realized just now I didn't even say when the release date was. It's already up for pre-order. The link for that will be in the description box down below. And I do plan on having both ebook, paperback, and hardcover for this book. If the paperback pre-order is not showing up by the time this video is up, which it should be, uh, it will appear later because I have to go through Ingram Spark to do that and I did have a little bit of trouble with them with this book setting all that stuff up. I am planning to do ARC readers for this book, which I did not do for Lightbringer and I think that was a mistake that I'm still trying to crawl my way out of that hole. So I will be doing ARC signups for this book probably sometime in February and then ideally the ARC copies will go out to the readers in March and they will have all of March and all of April to read the book and then leave their reviews. So I'm hopeful that that will help generate some hype around this book and get some reviews pouring in so that it's a good green light to readers when there are reviews. So I have really high hopes for this book. I hope that people love it. I've been very pleased and blown away by how many people have loved Lightbringer. It's amazing to know that someone loves the story that you created and poured so much time and effort into. There's no other feeling like it in the world and I honestly hope that I never get tired of it or it never gets stale. I don't think I'll ever get used to that. But oh, that's it. This, that's The Phoenix and the Crown, my third and upcoming YA fantasy novel. I cannot wait to be able to share this with you and I hope you love it and can't wait to sail the Atlas Sea with you April 30th. If you do have any questions about the book, leave them in the comment section down below and if possible I will do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. I appreciate each and every one of you. My name is Rachel Terry. I'm the author of three young adult fantasy books and I will see you in the next video. Bye!